Hello and welcome to the Short Shoot Triathlon Show, Episode 3. We'll look back briefly at the extreme pain and suffering of the Arena Games from Super League Triathlon, but mainly, mainly we'll be discussing the big news that came out today from Super League, which was outstanding. We're going to have a championship series and it's all coming up in September. There's going to be some other big news from the world of swim, bike and run as well. Now, I guess, same as last week, they've all decided to come back. Um, no idea how much they're being paid, but obviously it's enough to put up with me. Uh, Chris McCormack, four-time world champion, is here, uh, as he always insists on being called for fastest Ironman in the world ever. Tim Don is here. That's actually <laughs> on his business card. It's a, really, it's a big business card. Um, and the woman with the worst technical skills when it comes to operating a computer I think I've ever seen, Annie Emerson is here. Annie, can you hear us, see us? Do you know how to work the laptop? Is everything okay? I, I can't promise you, but I'm going to try. Everyone else looks normal apart from you, Will, and you look fuzzy. So, But maybe that's just your normal look, right? I feel fuzzy as what well. What was that? I feel fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, maybe it's just your eyes going there, mate. I, I mean, I'm not sure how you are. I mean, normally you wear glasses. We'll, we'll find out. Anyway, uh, recovering from the Arena Games. Obviously, I'm recovering from the, the repeated burns Annie put on me about not being elite last week. I haven't eaten for a week. Um, Tim, how are you? You're still in front of those lovely uh, paintings uh, in Lanzarote. So how are you feeling? How's the training going? It's all good. The sun's been out, the wind's been pumping and it's raining back in England. So it makes me feel even better. Um, it is a bit weird that the resort I'm staying in has up to 700 guests and there's only 40 people in the hotel. Ah, because that's weird. The, yeah, people just can't get here. So it's VIP treatment. The buffet is a bit a bit bland and very repetitive for three weeks. So I'm hurting there, if I'm honest. <laughs> but yeah, all's good, all's good. It's creepy having 700 rooms or whatever and 40 people. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. That's weird. Oh, it's, it's, it, I'll tell you the, the, the real positive is there are no cars on the roads. It is like, yeah, you can ride. Um, I'm out here with a, with a mate, so we've got tra we train together and we can ride. And there's no tooting, we can ride next to each other. Um, you can take the apex on the descents, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, so yeah, we're fortunate to be here, but yeah, you can see the economy. Um, yeah, on the island is is really hurting. Well, um, and you're contributing to it by eating from the buffet every day. So, well done. Um, uh, what about you, Maka? How are you feeling? How, how is everything? How obviously wash up? Obviously, you're very uh, involved in Super League. Wash up from Arena Games, and now this announcement. Very cool. Yeah, it's been good. So a lot, yeah, a lot been happening. I've just. I'm not in Spain. I'm still down in Sydney with you and, you know, just running through birthday parties. I've got that time of year in my household. Birthday parties for my wife, my son's next week. Yeah, it's all, all happening. But it's all great with Super League, being connected with the crew and super excited about the championship series. It just seems like so long ago we did a real race, a real Super League event. And so it's I'm excited. Not that the Arena Games wasn't real racing, but, um, you know, a good championship event where we see Vincent and everyone going around doing what they do on on tight dynamic courses i'm looking forward to that what did what did you buy emma for for her birthday i bought her a big piece of jewelry as you do but she's selecting it oh dangerous yeah very dangerous that's smart i would say smart <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh no you don't want to pick <laughs> yeah. it let her choose it do you, you never want to pick do it. you go like oh, no. okay this is the this is your price range or you just go here you go yeah I, just, I, I spoke to her best i spoke to her friends and said this is the price for this one I want to get. Make it special. Go through the process because it's a difficult process with Emma Jane. She's, mm. oh, I don't know. Mm. She's and did her friends say, how do we make it special with 40 bucks to work with? 45. <laughs> yeah, 45 bucks. <laughs> the high roller. Obviously, we know we're going to get employed yeah. at the end of the year now, so you're like, oh, 45, whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. I gave her a $50 note and I want the $5 change. <laughs> So. All right. So the big news, obviously, it's all on the website. It's all on the website, superleaguetriathlon.com. The championship series is back. Now, four venues announced. It's a big month, September. On the 4th, we go to London and Canary Wharf. Uh, the next week, Munich. So two new places we've never been before with Super League Triathlon. And then we head back to our old stomping ground, Jersey, on September the 18th. And then we wrap it all up with the Malibu Triathlon. So that's a that's got a lot of history behind it. We'll get to that in just a second. but. Let's get your initial thoughts, all three of you. Um, I mean, Tim, let's start with you from a, from a racer's perspective. I mean, I know you're all racers, but the only one that's still going. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, obviously, racing four weeks in a row, uh, come off the back of Tokyo, everyone's in peak form. It's going to be 
It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's going to be awesome. They're iconic venues. Um, you know, the field assembled. I'm, we'll get into that, I guess, later. But um, yeah, I mean, to race in the, the centre of London and then go to Munich, um, Jersey, I think, um, yeah, I think the, the athletes are going to be super pumped to, you know, to, to have four races on the bounce, having not raced much this year. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I, I I think Malibu, that's the, is that going to be a sea swim as in running in the beach and through the surf? See, that's another dynamic that they're going to be looking forward to. Um, that's the longest travel for most people, but probably the most important race if it's the, if it's the final, maybe double points or something. Um, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm super stoked that we're going to have, you know, yeah, swim, bike, run, yeah, outside. What about you, Annie? Obviously, we'll get, we'll, we're going on a little uh, little world tour there. And it's going to, I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun. I look at that, and I think we, there's going to be a lot of fun days there for everyone involved on the on the on the world tour. But also, yeah, iconic races and um, and a mixture of old and new. It's going to be fantastic. I've um, seen racing in Canary Wharf before, and I don't think I've seen anything like it. It's an absolutely stunning venue. It really is. Um, but it's certainly going to be ch- challenging for the athletes. Jersey, of course, is a great event. Uh, Super League, well established there. Um, I don't know much about Munich, but the Germans love their triathlon. But I think Malibu, we saw in Mallorca where they had that beach star, and it makes the racing even more exciting. Uh, it really does. I, th- I think what's going to be the challenge for the athletes is how they manage those four weeks, you know, back to back weekends of racing. Um, you know, they're in obviously in Europe for the first three races, but then they fly over to America for the last one. So I think it's going to be, you know, the athlete that's going to come out, out on top is the one that manages, you know, the back to back racing and the traveling in between. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Michael, what about you? Obviously, there's been a lot of discussions you would have been privy to in the, in the lead up to all of this. And um obviously settling on these four it probably gives you know a, a good range of different courses different formats that we're going to see everything that super league uh traditionally dishes up and a little bit of new stuff too yeah it was difficult we, we anticipated a, a couple more events but with covid pushing a few of those venues we had earmarked for 2021 out to 2022 we're, we're stoked to be able to get four races off the ground i'm really excited about the malibu event we've taken over the old established race there in malibu at zuma beach it was my home for 13 years. I lived around the corner from the venue. It's a, a remarkable race. And I always in, I always saw Super League moving to a beach style of race just to give, being an Australian, give the Australians that, that beach advantage when they used to race the Formula One series down here in Australia years ago on the beaches. It was the only advantage we had over the Europeans that we could catch some waves. And, and this event in Malibu has the potential in September to, to have a wave, and it's a wave that will come into play in the swim, which will make it interesting if we get that wave. The course is great. There's a massive mass participation event we'll be putting around it. I'm excited, just as I said to you guys before we started the podcast, I'm just excited to see some solid racing. I'm looking forward to the Olympic Games, but I really enjoy the Super League racing, the different formats we put together, that elimination of, of athletes that fall behind that 90-second mark. It's just an exciting way of racing, and I know the athletes enjoy it, and I just love that Hunger Games style of event that we've that we've built in that in that Super League series, and 2021 is going to be remarkable. I just stalked around in the Malibu Triathlon website um, before, and there's this huge list of um, celebrities that have done this race, like Tom Cruise and Matthew McConaughey, and all these, you know, all these people. And then if you keep scrolling down, and if you go, if you scroll for <laughs> six, eight, ten minutes, depending on your scroll speed, down the bottom, there's a picture of Chris McCormack looking like half the man he is now. Like, tell me, like, what's it like to race? Um, you know, what makes the, the the racing fun, and what what, what can the athletes look forward to? Because I know that it hasn't changed a lot. Obviously, the Super League course is going to be a little different to what you're expecting in a normal race, but the vibe of the place, what if you're an athlete going there with Super League for the first time, what's it going to be like? It, it's the best. Like, there's so many great races in, in the United States, but having you know lived in California primarily, I think it's the one of the best races in the country. The, the entire Hollywood set come down and, and are a part of this event. We've had J-Lo there in the past, Matthew McConaughey, um, um, it's the guy that used to be Ari Gold from ah, uh, Jeremy I Piven. Ari Gold, Cindy Crawford. Yeah, yeah, Jeremy Piven. Like some amazing people racing, right? And and I remember for years I used to go there with Mark Lees and we used to race this thing. And, and I used to, you know, the, the the guy that ran the event was a really really good friend of ours. And we we compete and we'd hang out with the celebrities at the after event. And and I remember they brought in a professional race a few years later, and they started paying prize purse. And I remember Stewie Hayes, who was an English triathlete, married to Michelle Dillon. <laughs> He came over and he won this pro race and he's talking to me saying, why aren't you racing the pro race? I said, I'm racing tomorrow. 
He's like, yeah, but there's no prize money in the race tomorrow. I said, yeah, mate, but this will be on prime time television in Australia, in, in, in the US, mate. Every single celebrity in the world is doing this event. It's massive. It's big, big news in LA. And he's like, oh, and so he won $1,500 and he said he caught the plane back to the UK and he said, I'll never forget it. The following day, he's at the airport in the UK and there's on the news, I've won the race that he apparently <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that bugger, he's done, he's, he's won the race and, and I'm, I'm the pro champion. He's getting all the accolades. So I used to race that, that celebrity event. It was amazing, amazing. I'll never forget J-Lo getting out of the water and Jennifer Lowe, or, yeah, J-Lo was just done the swim and they set up this makeshift towels with all her all her security staff so no one could get that picture of her pulling off a wetsuit the bum shot from behind it was incredible it's it's an amazing race thousands and thousands of spectators and let me okay it's, so it's amazing she's running out of the sand uh, up up the sand and then decided to put, and wherever she decides there's a whole bunch of guys who have to come out with towels immediately yeah in transition all the all her security staff came around with big ta- she had about five or six security staff because mate the paparazzi <laughs> Was out of this That's world. Funny. Like they, the paparazzi at this event is re- remarkable, and they all wanted the shot of J Lo taking off the wetsuit. So they all put it up, all the towel around, and made a like a change room, and she got changed, came out looking a million dollars, and got on a bike and took off. <laughs> she comes out of transition with a full face of makeup on, hair flowing <laughs> back, perfect. Oh, just just like you guys, obviously. As all, all yeah. elite athletes look that fresh when they come out of T One, I, I, I totally understand. Um, what about back to Jersey? Let's talk about that. Um, obviously, it's a great event, and 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 it's it's become a cornerstone of, of what we do. And the people turn out there, rain, rain, hail, or shine, absolutely love it. Um, it's a really good feel there. Um, Tim, I don't. I mean, I don't. You've never. You haven't been to a Super League jersey event, have you? I've never been to a Super League event except oh. for the arena game. Ah, so yeah, what no, are you I'm, doing? yeah, super, yeah, yeah. Tim, yeah, Tim. Yeah. come on, man, get off the podcast, man. I'm hanging with J Lo. I'm a, I'm a towel towel yeah. holder. Well, there's worse there's worse jobs in the world than J Lo's towel holder, I imagine. Are you going to be able to get to one of there these? Tim? Or, I mean, obviously we're having wild cards. Um, we're talking about wild cards in a minute, but it'll be pretty wild wild card for you. I yeah, I don't know how wild they're they're willing to 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 dig. Um, but yeah, no, it'd be great to get to an event. Um, yeah, Jersey. I've raced in Jersey. Um, ninety eight. I won the Jersey. Nineteen ninety eight. I won the Jersey International Triathlon. One of my mate Nick Saunders lives there. Yeah, it's a great venue. The course is so technical on the bike, watching it on TV. Um, and that swim, the water's pretty fresh. Um, but yeah, we're in the marina. Um, yeah, I think I think one thing with, we miss from the arena games is that hustle and bustle, you know, shoulder to shoulder on the bike, the, the, the spills, um, you know, who's going to take the, 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 the short shoot, um, you know, all of that, that. So yeah, I think Jersey obviously is easier to watch in the UK. So I'm really excited about that event. What about you, Annie? I think um, what I'm liking is that we're going to, I mean, remember last year, was it? No, two years ago when it was blowing a gale sideways. It was like <laughs> monsoonal conditions. You weren't there, Annie, that one. Because we, <laughs> Macca and I got blown over, and but then we got to go to the commentary box and then everyone else was still stuck out there and it was outstanding. I'm hoping that happens again and you're out there just getting absolutely hammered and Macca and I are eating like uh, jelly snakes in the commentary box. I really don't know why you'd say that, Will. That's quite unkind of you. But um, anyway, I was there previously and the weather was, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Um, it was it was really nice the year before. I tell you what I like about that event, and it's the brutal part of coming out of the swim and then going back in the swim with that ridiculous steep stairs um, going down into the arena. And I think that makes it really tough, particularly coming out, because a lot can happen there. Um, we don't see that too much in any of the other events, and that makes it really tough. But, um, no, it's a super event. I think, as you said as well, um, Tim, it is it's so fast, and it's really technical on the bike. So you can expect to see a lot of fun, and uh, let's hope the wind blows a little bit less this year. Thinking about accidents, I, 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 I'm I, just thinking about who's had the best who's had the best stack or the biggest stack in, or that's, that's Australian slang for accident, on the bike. And it probably is Laura Lindemann. Now, that was a jersey. I don't know if you remember that yeah, one, Macca. Yeah. That was horrible. Yeah, yeah. Like, she hit the bollards and then just scorpioned legs over the top. But then she did it again the next day in the same spot. Oh, yeah. That's probably the best one. And- Consistency. Mm. Consistency. I like that. We had Alistair in the, in the commentary booth with us who's – not too kind to bike crash people. <laughs> or to anyone at all. He's a hard critic. He's a hard critic. Very hard critic. Very, oh, very hard. Alistair Brownlee is a, is a tough man to commentate with because, like, if you have a point of view 
and he doesn't agree. Like, you should try racing him. Uh, I'm an yeah, no, I, 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 I imagine. I mean, I've seen him yelling at people, but he'll undermine you. Like, a commentary team's a team, right? So if I say something and he doesn't agree, he'll be like, well, that's completely <laughs> Will. And I'll be like, that's a stupid idea, Will. That's, that's, you obviously have never raced, Will. That wouldn't happen oh, like that. Thanks, Alistair. Thank you so much. It's so kind of you to say. I thought we were a team here. Friends. Commentary friends. He doesn't suffer fools, does he? Well, that's the problem. It scares me. It scares me a lot. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, sorry. I haven't won any gold medals. Okay, fine. Can't go on anything Super League without getting hammered. <laughs> How do you think Johnny feels? <laughs> Poor lad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I agree. Yeah. At least I'm the best triathlete in my family, you know? But the only time we've ever seen him get excited when we're in commentary was the event in Mallorca when we're all there and Johnny took the short shoot a lap early in front of Vince and mate Alistair lost it. He, he got out of the chair in the commentary and just was one hundred percent focused on Johnny's race at that point. Forgot that he was on TV. Forgot that he was commentating. We lost him, didn't we? Will it was it was actually really good to see. Yeah, it was yelling over the top of us. At the, yeah, we were kind past. of like we, we all lost interest <laughs> in the actual work we were doing, didn't we? And then just started watching this race. Of Johnny taking it early and then Vince coming back and doing the job on him, yeah, that was that was one of the greats. And 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 yeah, again, coming in and out of the surf, it gives us a little taster for what Malibu will be. But if there is if there is waves, I mean, watch out for an Emma Jeff coat or something like that to just yeah. dominate in that area. Anyway, um, let's go through the athlete list. So they've just been announced today, and I tell you what, the lineups are stellar. So there's going to be wild card announcements when we get closer to each event, and there's going to be some exciting names in that. Tim Don, don't know. Annie Emerson, definitely not. Maka possibly about Will? is in charge. Is Will racing? Let's start with the women. <laughs> and how about this for a... It goes, goes without saying. I'm actually in the list here, but anyway, we'll get to that. Um, it's very funny. Hang on, I should, I should, use, I should, I should have used my, my little drums and uh, little drums. In. <laughs> yeah, I've been working out how to do that. Uh, women, Katie Zafiris, Georgia Taylor-Brown, Jess Learman. Cassandra Bogran, Beth Potter comes in for the first time. Sophie Caldwell is back, Taylor Spivey is back, Rachel Klammer, Vicky Holland, Emma Jeffcoat, Yuko Takahashi, mm-hmm. Leone Perio, Anna Godoy comes in for the first time after racing at the Arena Games. Mm-hmm. Maya Kingma, I think, does her first proper Super League event after two appearances at the Arena Games. Ilaria Zane and Valerie Bartellamy, what do we think of that lineup? We'll start with you, Maka. Very heavy English lineup of women. Basically, where they're dominating the world at the moment between the Americans and and the English. It's it's going to be really good. I, I what's going to be great is you're going to see momentum coming off an Olympic Games. You know, there's a big possibility that mm. the Cassandra Beaugrand and the French team could win that mixed relay team gold. You know, she's she's a young athlete. She's already been very very successful in Super League racing. She brings so much to the equation. But you're coming up against such powerful. English competitors with Beth, Beth Potter doing so many amazing things in the arena games and now has the ability to, to race a series of, of championship events. I'm really looking forward to it. And, and Katie's had a very, very rough year. She's had a year off. She lost a father this year. Um, we'll see how that goes for her. But she has shown that come Super League racing, she is the dominant force over all the formats we put together. And I expect her to do, do amazing things. She's back in training camp now and, and following everything she does on social media. She's focused on on a big year ahead. What about you, Annie? I mean, what what do you think about that? Obviously, there there is five Brits there: Taylor Brown, Potter, Learman, Caldwell, and Holland, um, all of whom are, are regulars except for Beth, and she's obviously had the taste. So they'll be um, hard to beat. But then you look at there's class all the way down that list. It, it is a fantastic lineup. It really is. There's a lot of experience in there in terms of previous Super League racing, which will will make it really interesting and I think the athletes are going to be really hungry to get out there and race because yes they'll have had the Olympics yes they'll have had a couple of world triathlon series events but the athletes love the super league racing and I think you know looking down it's always hard to discount Katie Safiris but we haven't seen her race now for a year and a half I did notice that Cassandra Bogran raced in Spain last weekend at a European cup race it's a fairly decent field and she actually absolutely hammered it and of course, let's not forget that Cassandra going into that 2019, 2020 season was in the lead and then had a mechanical and dropped behind 
back down to fourth place. So I think mm-hmm. she's going to be really hungry to get out there and prove herself because we saw the absolute utter disappointment where when it all fell apart from her when she had that mechanical. I mean, and the, it's, a, it's a top class list, but I, I think Sophie Colwell, the back of that Arena Games um, event, showed us how good she is over the short course racing and, you know, particularly the super sprint stuff, the super league stuff. And I think Sophie Colwell is going to be a tough one to beat if she stays, you know, in t- top condition because she has improved her run and that's where she failed previously. Yeah, um, there's a couple of names that aren't there too. I'm just thinking about it now. I mean, Katie Zafiris is out there with Taylor Spivey as the two Americans, but we don't see Kirsten Casper. We don't see Summer Rappaport, who we, we've seen so all the way through. And because the, what reminded me is when we think about that was on the, the halfway up Mount Malta when uh, Cassandra had that mechanical and she was wearing the pink. I remember she was crying. And that made me think of that other classic race up there between Summer and Kirsten and Katie, where Katie just hit the jets at the back end, but those three were so strong. So I'm not sure how that changes things, but they're two big names, Tim, I guess you could pull out where they've just they've just been such a big part of the narrative of the women's racing in the first couple of seasons, and we don't see them this time. At least, I mean, they might get announced later, but not in this initial list. Yeah, I think the key for, for all the women is the ones that are going to the Olympics. It's, um, it's how you come off the back of it. I mean, um, you know, if you get a medal, you might party for two weeks. If you just miss out on a medal, you could be down for two weeks, you know, and then you've got Beth, mm. Sophie, who aren't going to the Games. They can solely focus on that. And this is a, the Olympic Games is a funny mix anyway. But when you've, when it's a year later, the, the pressure that people, the federations are going to be putting on those athletes, you know, hopefully they can really, you know, get focused again and ready to go. Um you know, and I think we're going to see lots of people learning how to race the series because they're back to back. You know, some small mistakes you can really fix and execute better the next week. Um, so I think we might see some athletes kind of like build into it. You've obviously got, you know, Katie and Cassandra who are, you know, seasoned Super League racers. But some of the the other athletes who haven't done any, um, you know, they might take some chances early on that don't work, but they can rectify them seven days later. So, and again, it's, it's the travel, it's the, the fatigue, getting your peak right for that super fast stuff is, yeah, is really hard. So I think, I think you could toss a coin. Well, yeah, you need a, you need a, I don't know, a 20 side, a 15 sided dice, you know, to see who's going to get on the podium, um, you know, in, in the first race. So yeah, I'm really excited and it's, it's a world-class field. I mean, it's, it's, it has got a strong British flavor, but it's, it's an international field. Yeah, and we're going to add some names to that as well. And and I guess um, my question here is: do, Does the Olympic champion come from this list? I mean, can any does anyone beat Flora? Uh, or you know, is is one of our is one of these Super League women going to be the Olympic champion? Are we going to are we going to see that person come to Super League with a gold medal? Maka, what do you think? Mate, picking the Olympic Games is the hardest yeah. thing to ever do. Like it's it's. But I, I I do see I think I think Georgia Taylor Brown has really matured as a as an athlete and 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 I, and you age in dog years as an athlete so two years is a long time you know you know it's it's you know 2019 mm. building into a 2020 Olympics that was a long time ago we're looking you know so a lot happens in the evolution of an athlete over 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 a year and I think GTB Georgia Taylor Brown and and these younger athletes Cassandra Bogran I don't think will have the the leg the, the endurance to win the individual race but I think. The French are very, very difficult to beat in that mixed relay and that momentum of her and, and, and Vincent Louis on that relay side. I think they're the team to beat on the mixed relay side. But in the in the women's, I do believe that, you know, if you go back to the Tokyo Test event, Jess and, and GTB did a number on them all, right? It's it's They did win that race. Flora Duffy brings a brings a whole different race to the, to the women's racing. She's very, very aggressive. She's very... Very Alistair Brownlee ish in her ability ability to rip a field apart. She has a big swim. She's tactically astute on the bike. She's not not afraid of taking risks and taking chances and taking a group with her. But she's got such big swimmers that in the past weren't able to tag her. And if they did, she could out she could outrun them. Those rate those runners and swimmers have evolved, and I think they're capable of doing anything. And, and that little group that can get away, of which Flora brings a lot of momentum to that could set it right up for an English win as a call. All right, there you go. What about you guys? I'll, I'll, before we – because I'm, we, we've actually got a couple of special guests coming up on this show, um, and we're going to speak to Jess Lee Month in just a second. We've also got Vincent Lewis coming up, uh, which is going to be fantastic. But 
before we get to that, just quick thoughts from from Annie and Tim. Who, who's your who's your your standout for for the games? Who's your pick for for Tokyo? And does it come from this list? Annie, let's start with you. What do you think? Oh wow! I mean, I, I think. Yeah, Maka just said it. How do you call the Olympics? Honestly, um, really hard. And particularly because, you know, God knows what's been happening. You know, um, we, we might get an opportunity. Obviously, we've seen um, arena games. That's going to be, that's obviously very different style racing. Um, we'll see a couple of World um, Triathlon Series events. That might give us a bit more of an idea. I just think, you know, I mean, Katie Tafiri is, oh, love her. What an incredible, awesome racer she is. But Cassandra Beaugrand, um, when she's on form, I've always thought she's an athlete, but can she handle the pressure? She swims beautifully. Biggest problem for her probably is the bike tactically. You know, we haven't seen her. I don't think she's reached where she needs to go, um, but it's going to be hot and it's going to be all about an athlete that can deal with those conditions. So, um, oh, wow. Yeah, you can't discount the the Brits. Absolutely not. Georgia Taylor-Brown, Jess Learmont, class acts. They really are. Vicky Holland as well, an experienced athlete with bronze medal from Rio um, but it's going to be all about who stays the calmest who can deal with the heat and who can run the quickest I mean you know that that goes without saying but you know don't look too um, far beyond I think you know the likes of Cassandra Bogrand, Katie Sapiris and the, the top five girls really that we're looking at as Super League I think so I haven't really I haven't really said it I've sort of sat on the fence like, <laughs> what <laughs> you just picked everyone in the field you picked everyone in the field, but then said, oh, but it could be anyone on the day. So you couldn't have been more broad on that. You could be a politician. That's great. Great. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Uh, Tim, Tim, give me one name, man. Just say, hey, it's going to be Cassandra. And then I'll be like, cool, let's move on. I think it's going to be Jess. I think, um, you know, she had a disappointing Hamburg World Champs last year in lockdown. I, um, and I just think... Um, yeah, she's she's got that freshness about her. She's got the she's she is the swim she is the fastest swimmer. And on that course, it's technical. At the test event, she rode the first couple of laps off the front on her own, kind of waiting for the girls. And that was with a world class swim field. With you know, Flora was there, and 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 obviously Georgia. Um, I don't think she's going to be holding Georgia Taylor Brown's hand as she crosses the line <laughs> this time this time round. I think she's learned her lesson. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be an interesting build up. I think the first couple of races are going to be key, but she hasn't, um, she's not doing uh, um, Yokohama. So I don't know if that's tactically a good thing or, or a bad thing. But yeah, there's going to be, I don't even think the gold medalist, I think you could see the whole podium at Super League, like for real. I mean, um, yeah, so it's going to be exciting. But yeah, I'll go for, for Jess. Yeah, that, and thank you for that because it's a perfect bridge into my uh, interview I did a little bit earlier on with. Uh, Tim Don's pick for the Olympic Games and many other people's as well, Jess Lim. Jess, thank you so much for joining us from what looks like your living room. Lovely flowers, by the way. It looks lovely in the background. Uh, how are you? Uh, just for you, that. Uh, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for having me on. I'm uh, just a f- normal Friday here and a bit of training. Nothing exciting. So why now? Why the decision to join the ranks of Super League Triathlon? Obviously, it comes off the back of, of Tokyo. Um, and I guess everything lined up for you. And you obviously did so well at the Arena Games. Why now? I've, I don't know. I, the, the Arena Games just give me a little uh, snippet of what it's like. And I don't know, it just it's so fun and well organized. And you get to go places and they just do it so different. And really um I can't think of the word but just like up not upper class just really cool so I don't know I just really fancied it we could be upper class that's fine upper class is good (laughs) yeah but not upper class but just not you know cool just different um I feel really old saying cool but um but yeah the reason I didn't originally I thought I couldn't cope with the the fast and furious, you know, young bucks and stuff. I'm, I'm knocking on, but I quite enjoyed the arena games. I've probably like committed to it now, and then I'll probably just die a death and think, oh, it's nothing like the arena games. But either way, you're going to nice places. It'd be a good laugh, won't it? So. Yeah, yes, it will be. It will be a very good laugh. But you say that, right? Oh, the, all the young bucks are too fast. And then you went to the arena games and took every single point on offer, and you did it by streets were you surprised by that result um considering you know the field you had 
Uh, yeah, definitely. I and especially because we'd have been locked down and we'd not been in the pool for eight weeks or something. So, and it was a pool swim, so it was all so different. But I don't know. Yeah, I didn't expect it at all. But I think I just got my head down and I was deadly serious about it and just I don't know, just went for it. Like even when I had a lead, I was still still just going for it. I don't know. It's weird when you're on a turbo. It's just totally different. So, yeah, just a bit of a weirdo. You just got in the cave, didn't you? Because you, I remember calling it and you, I'm saying, mate, slow down. You, you're like 25 seconds ahead. Just stop hurting yourself. And then your face was like. You look like such an idiot, you know, because you had a massive gap and you were still really trying. And I'm like, well, I'm, it's. I was just finishing the race. <laughs> it's yeah, it. dominating. You were like, yeah. just really dominating. Right. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely smashed it. Now, I mean, let's let's hope for more of that. Obviously, there's there's a very British flavour in the um in the lineup for the women's five five Brits. So you're taking up at the moment a third of the field, and we're going to do two races at home, I guess, for you vaguely, because we've got London, we've got Jersey, and in between we've got Munich and Malibu. Now, what do you think of that for? Four rounds in four weeks will be a bit of a Super League World Tour. I know. Is it? Did you say we were getting a private jet for each place? Is that right? I oh. cannot confirm yeah. or deny these allegations. <laughs> I won't be honest. <laughs> I know. I think it's good. I've never been to Munich. I've never been to Jersey. I have been to London. Uh, and I haven't been to Miami, so I'm going to be loving it. It's just going to be different places, so... And I think it's good. It's a bit like Formula One sort of thing. You know, everyone's just bash, bash, bash. So you've got to be on it, haven't you? And you've got to recover well and stuff. Yeah, I think it'd be really fun. It'd be inter- it really will be interesting to see how people perform week on week because even at, what was the gap between London and Rotterdam? Was it three weeks? Uh, yes, three weeks, yes. Yeah. It wasn't that yep. long, was it? And you can still see a difference in performance. So... It'd be interesting to see who, who, if anyone like full on dies or, do you know what I mean, vice versa, comes through at the end. Or someone dominates it all, you never know. Yeah. Be interesting. I guess tactically as well. I mean, there is one race there that's there's six days apart um, because it's a Sunday to a Saturday. And mm-hmm. and I guess it's you've got to accumulate points. It's a little bit like a, a, a month long arena games because you've got to accumulate points. So you've got to understand maybe not, you know, hammering is if you're 30 seconds ahead, maybe you'll just ease it off a bit because you've got to race again in six days. So you got to think about that, mate. Yeah, I'll struggle with that one more. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe I should, yeah, think about that. <laughs> How about the lineup, too? So you've got Cassandra Bogrand, Katie Zafiris, Rachel Klammer, uh, Vicky Holland. Sophie Colwell, I'm just, I've got to get the list up here because I don't see who else have we got? Uh, Beth Potter is coming in. Uh, Taylor Spivey, did I already say? I don't know. Leonie Perio. There's so many names and they're all contenders. Like it's a hugely deep field. That is going to be really hard. <laughs> How many in total? Uh, 15. There's 15 women uh, that are named, but we'll have wild cards as well that'll come in uh, late on. So you can't rest. We don't know who, I don't know who that's going to be. It could be anyone. And uh, there's a few names that aren't there, like Kirsten Casper and Summer Rappaport at the moment uh, from the Americans yeah. we talked about. But it's but then you welcome people in like uh, Maya Kingmer and Beth Potter uh, that add to a yeah. field that is so good. I mean, I mean you could pick yeah. any of them on any day. And then there's Jess Learmonth, who you know I hear is is pretty good. Well, he's going to be harder than Olympics. This it's going to because you know sometimes in the Olympics, obviously there's only a certain amount of people can go from one nation, even though they're a strong nation or whatever. So actually, it's going to be jam packed. <laughs> It's going to be. You sound yeah, nervous, mate. Are you all right? Do you want to pull out? A bit, yeah. <laughs> Is that an option? <laughs> well, actually, speaking of the Olympics, man, it's coming up uh, not long now, 80 um, something days. Um, and the great Tim Don, we were just talking about it before, uh, has picked you as his uh, gold medalist. I mean, do you, how do you feel right now it? heading in? And yeah, he has. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we asked everyone and he, he picked you out. And I picked you too. I picked you as well. I mean, I mean, I didn't say it, but in my head, I was like, "Yeah, Jess," and I'm saying that now. Oh, um, no. thanks. Are you doing that because we're chatting now? I've got. A that's why. Yeah, that's why. 
Uh, yeah, hundred percent. But how how are you feeling? This last question. I mean, obviously we're getting close, and you must be sort of not feeling the pressure, but you're not too far away now. No, it's creeping up. Do you know when everyone does the countdowns? I think. Do we need the countdowns? It's coming fast enough. I don't need to know the specific days, but um, yeah, I wasn't feeling the pressure until Tim. Do you know what I mean? I was, mm. I was just cruising a long time, but now you never know. No, I, I, um, things are fine now. I mean, I've had an awful winter, but um, yeah, I feel like I'm I'm progressing, and uh, it's just going to be in time, really. So I'm looking forward to it. Last question, and it's a very serious, serious, deep question. If Potentially, circumstantially, you were crossing. You were you were neck and neck with Georgia Taylor Brown crossing the line in Tokyo for real this time, and and you yeah. thought, oh, we could we could hold hands again, and then you said to her, <laughs> let's hold hands again, right? And then you held hands, yeah. and then you were five meters before the line. Would you sell her out at the last minute <laughs> and sprint? Of course I would. Yes, yeah. of course you would. Of course you would. <laughs> Absolutely. She's pretty well champ. She's already had that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, like... I'll make sure she sees that. The smart the smart option <laughs> would have said, no, no, not at all. We would go across together and then lull her into a false sense of security and then do it on the day. <laughs> but now I've messed it up because she'll never trust me now. Oh. Mm-hmm. No. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Well, hang on. No, 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 no I wouldn't really. I'd say, out. <laughs> it's very sad trying to come between you i'll I'll stop wasting your time jess thank you so much for joining us and also just thank you for signing up and making what is an incredibly strong super league triathlon lineup just that little bit stronger thanks jess Uh, yeah thanks for having me and i look forward to racing can't wait there you go, Jess Learman. Uh So good to speak to her. And unfortunately, now I have to speak to these guys again and continue. Uh, but here we are. Um, now, Annie, you mentioned uh, the European Cup race. Obviously, just really want to quickly mention that. Cassandra Bogran had a, a dominant uh, run leg and dropped, I think she there was a dozen that came off the bike together. Um, really weird. Melilla is like a, it's like, I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it, but it's in North Africa, but it's a Spanish town, city. Uh, anyway, Leone Perio came third behind Angie Olmo, another Super League triathlon athlete. And the men's, Leo Berger won from Dorian Connick. So how good are the French going at the moment? Annie, I mean, you're the one that brought this to my attention, but the French are on fire. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting because, you know, these are, I hate to use that expression because people have used it so much, unprecedented times without saying. And, um, you know, we haven't been able to see where people are or how their training is going. But to actually see, as you mentioned there, Leo Berger, um, and Dorian Connix, two of the top, you know, French athletes, and Cassandra Beaugrand, like coming out on top with with great run splits. You know, they executed brilliant races. It, it was as if they haven't missed the racing. So the the Frenchies are nailing it. And I think, you know, with mm. just a, a couple of months out, three months out now to the Olympics, um, that's interesting because we know how strong the French team are. Hey, how about Tim not realizing that? Tim, you're on camera all the time. You realise that, like when when we cut this, like it's it's split into four. So uh, I, I in wasn't interested in what Annie was saying. I, I disagree with her. She she picked the whole feet, the whole French team basically. Not even she didn't even single out one of them. <laughs> no, I, my battery was going. I had to I, I had to my um. Computer. He didn't even listen to her. But I was wondering, do you think the French team are focused more, except for they're letting uh, Vincent do his thing, which is win? But do you think the rest of the team are more? focusing on the team relay um because you, you you have to take part in the individual but i don't know if you have to finish yeah. or you know there's going to come a point where maybe a gold medal is a gold medal you know whether you win the, the 100 meters or the four by one man you're, you're immortalized um so i just wonder you know if that's what the way the french team you know they pick two say yeah I've spoken to their high performance director Ben, and and that is a primary focus for the French. They believe they are the team to to beat in, in in Tokyo at the test event at the at the Olympic Games. And I actually brought up the conversation. It was an interesting point you make, Tim, about you know what happens because the relay is two days after the individual event. It's going to be 37, 36 degrees, really, really hot. Mm. If you're if you're out of the individual event, you're not in it. Do you step off? Like, do you save those legs for the for the relay? So it could be one of those interesting dynamics where the 
where the, both the individual race and the relay, there's there's certain p- athletes that are focused on one or the other event, and that, and so it's there's less people chasing that gold medal in the individual event because some teams have selected a primarily relay based team, and they're not really going to be focused on that individual race, and vice versa. So that'll be interesting because I I personally don't I think Cassandra Beau Grand is is the future of 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 women's racing. I think she's a little bit inexperienced and she doesn't hold that endurance base yet. I, it reminds me of a young Courtney Atkinson, who was just this dynamic talent as a young junior. And it took him a few years to build that endurance base that ultimately took him to the top of the world of the of that Olympic distance racing. But he just didn't have that strength that's required to win Olympic distance racing. But put him in a in a relay or a, or a super sprint race, he was unbeatable. And I, I just see that's where Cassandra Bogrand is at the moment. And Vincent Louis is is my pick to 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 be very, very strong in the men's mm-hmm. race and the, and the one of the ones to beat. But that's all heat dependent. Heat changes the game for everybody. Well, we're going to talk to Vince uh, in just a second. Uh, he's in Girona. We're going to cross over to him and, and catch him, uh, which would be early morning at the moment. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk about the men's field. Uh, and if the women's field was stacked, the men's field, you just could you just throw a handkerchief over the whole lot of them. Here, here's the list for the men's, for Super League Triathlon, uh, all the way through September, you're going to be able to watch the world champion, Vincent Lewis. You're going to be able to watch uh, Olympic medalist, Jonathan Brownlee. You're going to be able to watch Commonwealth Games gold medalist, Henry Schumann. Hayden Wilde, who has been such a big part of this journey, and his journey has been incredible as well. He's stuck in New Zealand at the moment, not allowed to race in Yokohama, but he'll be on this list. Christian Blumenfeld is down for it as well. This is We're talking two weeks before Kona, which is he's also aiming to race in. He's a madman. Alex Yee, um, Martin Van Riel, Vasco Velasa, Gustav Eden, Yella Gaines, Justus Nieschlag, who obviously won Arena Games the first time around, Jonas Schomburg, Richard Murray is back at it, a 2017 champion, Tyler Mislachuk, who won the test event in Tokyo and could win it, Leo Berger, Matt Hauser, all standouts. Any one of them could win on any day, I feel. Maka, what do you think about that? For the Super League racing or for the Olympic Games? The Super League racing. I forget the Olympic Games. Okay. Let's talk about go back to Super okay. League. I mean, what? Like, listen, well, let's. I, I, mate, I, if we asked Annie well, who would win out of those guys at the Olympics, we'd be. Okay. We could all just get up and walk out. We'd just be like, okay, we'll be back and get a cup of tea once you've told us that all of them are going to win. But it could be anyone. No, for Super League. For Super how, League. Well, look, Macam. How can you go look, in Super League racing? You cannot. You can't bet against Vincent no. Louis. He does everything perfect. He's top two swimmers in the field. He's technically brilliant on a bike. He's he's aggressive racer. His run dynamic kick finish is, is better than anyone there is. And basically the athletes have to take it up and, and dislodge him. And I think he likes to be in that position. He's he's a little bit like the olden day Miles Stewart where he can just sit and kick. And that's a that's a very, very dangerous racer. So it's it's hard to beat a Vincent Louis. I like young talent like Matt Hauser, who has a big swim. He has he's, he's technically on paper, and I know this from the Australian High Performance Program. It may have changed from 18 months ago when we had this conversation, but he is the fastest ever ITU relay racer that's ever done on, on a split. <laughs> Matt Hauser. hasn't so made any races he has, since then. He's still, I, he I know, so you. there you go. So technically he's, he's the fastest ever relay, done the fastest ever relay leg ever from, from any nation in the world in, in a relay. So he's... He's great at this style of racing. He's never he, he's shown flashes of brilliance in Super League, but he's sort of been in and he's never really been in or he's just been in or out. You know, he's never really committed to a series. So this time he is. I, I like Leo Bergier, but he's 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 more a person that brings a race around him. But and Christian Blumenfeld, whenever he's in a race, I just the facial expressions. He's you know he doesn't have the 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 tactical not the tactical but the skill base of of the other athletes. I think especially mm-hmm. on the bike on these tight circuits, but. His brute strength, he, he gives three bite lengths off every turn and just muscles his way back onto the group. And he only feels comfortable when he's in front. He's one of those guys, like a Spencer Smith sort of, that is either on the front or at the back. He, he, he can't sit in a group. And that's that hasn't played to his advantage in being successful at Super League racing, but he's been bloody successful at Super League racing. So it, it's it's too hard to pick a winner, but Vincent Louis done it year on, year out, and anyone who, who bets against him is is foolish. Well, who who, do, who does it? Who knocks him off? I mean, Martin Van Riel is in incredible form. They train together, and you know, and he, he didn't even pick out like a Schumann or a Brownlee there, who you know obviously would win just about half the races they go in anywhere else. But this field is incredible. So, I mean, Annie, your your thoughts first of all. I mean, you've got 
all standouts there. You've got a couple of new faces in Yellow Gaines and Justice Nishlav. You've got guys that have come on in leaps and bounds in the last couple of years. And you've got the established uh, superstars of the sport. Wow, yeah, absolutely um, incredible. And, yeah, I'm going to re- reiterate what Maka said about Vance on Louise. How can you back, back, again, uh, book back against him? Is that the right expression? Um, yeah. So I think I love Yellow Games. I think he's uh, another up and, co- up and coming superstar. He's also in the camp with uh, trains with Van Son Louise, with Martin Van Riel, with the Joel Filio uh, group. So another star coming out there. But watching Martin Van Riel um, at the Arena Games and how he's matured as an athlete, um, he doesn't really have a weak link. link. Um, I think he's grown in confidence. I really do. So, but you know, as you said, there's no weak link in this field. You know, every one of those athletes is capable of, of winning a stage, winning maybe not the overall. Gustav Eden as well, um, Christian Blumenfeld's training partner. Um, his weakness is in the swim but he's absolutely dynamite everywhere else. So depending on what he's been doing over his uh, with his swim over the uh, winter, I think that will that will be he'll be interesting to look at. Vasco Velaza, the Portuguese, he, he I think he'd be disappointed with his performance in the Arena Games. But again, another you know up and coming superstar, young and really hungry, and that's what we're looking at here. But incredible field, and you know difficult to call it but I think you know Martin Van Riel is definitely going to be up there with Van Son Luis um Johnny Brownlee loves the style of racing as well you know he's had great super league so you know expect to see him up there as well or thereabouts <laughs> yeah you've done it again everyone on the list no, no, no. everyone on the list and I'll just I'm reading the list and you're like tick yep, tick, yeah, it's just like, okay. Okay. <laughs> what do you want to, is there anything you want to say about Alex Yee there mate before we wrap up this bit of the podcast yes um, yes but we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the Olympics <laughs> oh, God, I don't think we've got time for that mate <laughs> I don't think we've got time um, what, one thing that I, I really like about it is every single race up to the Olympics now because of COVID it, you know and this includes the arena games and it made me think of it when you mentioned Vasco because you never know where people are up to before an Olympic Games coming out of COVID. You're like, okay, like, you know, we saw Rachel Klammer get spat out the back in the Arena Games. We're like, well, it probably wasn't her time in her training block or she's got, or everyone's got different problems with their where they can swim or run or they weren't up to the, – they're not in the right spot of the cycle. But when you get to September, everyone's hit the Olympic Games. They've all peaked at the same time and there's no excuses. So And so everyone's going to be – there's, there's no one who is going to shock us with not being any good, especially because we're going four weeks and there's going to be a narrative that develops across the course of it where the, we don't have one race and then yeah. a month goes past and everyone can be in different shape and then come back together again. It's going to be like bang, bang, six days, bang, bang, let's go again. Like the narrative of it, the idea of it, it, it really excites me. So, Tim, what uh, who stands out for you there? I mean... I'm with Annie. If you were asking me, I'd be like, oh, okay, let's start here. Well, he could win because of this, he could win because of this, he could win because of this, and the rest of the field could also win because of the same reasons. But you're I a think, brave yeah, man. You've got, Give us yeah, a Vincent, I mean, what's his weakness? I, I don't know. I mean, you know, wearing pink, you know? He, he hasn't got one. Zero. And I think there's four athletes. <laughs> he loves wearing pink. He loves it. That's that's his strength for him. Right? He's got pink shoes. You've got pink shoes made yeah, up, especially but, for Super League last time, remember? If anyone can pull off the pink, he's the man. He is, and and there are four people from his training squad doing the Super League. And I think I think the Olympics is done. Joel will already be focusing on their coach on the Super League. And when you've got four people training so specific, such high intensity, they're going to be rolling off each other. You could see a one, two, three from that squad. I think Alex Yee is really um, maturing as an athlete and. Whether he goes to the Olympics, or, if he goes to the Olympics or not, he'll see it as a bonus because I think most people in our country, Great Britain have written him off for the Olympics. So that will keep him high and rolling on. And if he doesn't get selected, I think he'd be like, right, you guys, I'm going to show you what Alex Yee is all about. His swimming in the pool is fantastic. Um, I think we saw that in the arena games. Maybe over the short, shorter distance, the gaps won't be so big. He's often in the second group. Um, technically, he seems good on the bike. So I'm going to I'm going to say Alex Yee for a podium, but you can't bet against Vincent. You know, I mean, they say there's only one Michael Schumacher, maybe we'll be saying there's only one, you know, one Vincent Louis when it comes to to this format of racing because, um, yeah, he's just, whether it's Henry Schumann going neck and neck with him, he's got the kick. He's got the technical. He knows when to take the, the shortcuts. 
um, you know, his transitions. Yeah. So Alex Yee, though. Uh, yeah, well, it's another exciting thing Super League are doing to bring more fans in the sport. They're doing a documentary on Vincent Lewis. So there's going to be a four-episode doco. The Super League are going to follow Vince all the way from now until Super League, which will include, um, obviously, it'll be on all Super League's digital channels. Uh, he's going to try. He's, he's trying for the treble here. He's going to try and win WTS. He's going to try and win the Olympics, and then he's going to back it up with a Super League triathlon title. But the thing with the thing with Vincent Louis, he could come off these Olympics, and this is just putting it out there. I'm not saying it could happen, but Alistair Brownlee has yeah. two Olympic gold medals. Vincent Louis could come out of these Olympics with two Olympic gold medals as well. The first, like a relay and an individual gold, which is remarkable. So we need to get Alistair in the commentary comment comment in the booth with you with you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'll bring that up in commentary. Yeah, 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 yeah he's, he's got two as well. Alistair. That would be fun. If we're talking about, you know, a 4 by 100 or a 100-metre gold medal being worth the same and we try and put that argument to Alistair saying, well, <laughs> his it. two gold medals are worth the same, I, you can imagine what he's saying to that. Up. got to bring it up. He would not <laughs> enjoy that discussion. <laughs> I'll bring it up 100%. I'm not. No, nah, he will just undermine me then and be continuously for the rest of the telecast. Anyway... The teaser trailer for the for the, the first episode of the Vince Doco will be dropping at the end of the show. So um, make sure that you – and then in June is the release of the first uh, episode of this doco and it's going to be released August, then October, then November as probably Vince just goes ahead and wins everything like he did at the end of last year. Um, now, we'll, we'll get your thoughts on that uh, in a second, but I got to catch up with the, the man himself uh, a little while ago from Girona, ahead of his tilt, obviously, he's preparing uh, for WTS Yokohama. Vince, thanks for joining us, mate. And how good is it to see some racing confirmed? It's been a while since you've worn the pink. I miss seeing you in the pink. Are you ready to get back at it? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me, Will. Um, yeah, actually, hearing your voice right now rem- reminds me of, uh, of racing, so that's that's a good sign, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been blush. a while wearing the pink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been a while wearing the pink, and uh, yeah, I'm still uh, I'm still a bit uh, bit of to see uh, Martin wearing my pink, but uh, yeah, he he does it well, so that's that's fine until until I can race him. Yeah, well, it's not going to be too long um, and, and some new places we're going to go to. So obviously we go back to Jersey. And if I recall, because it seems like such a long time ago now that we're in Jersey, you won because I think it was you and Pierre Lacour right at the end and then you just left him behind like you do in the last three or 400 metres. So Jersey's back on the calendar. London, Munich, Malibu. What do you think of that? Well, that's, that. I mean, first of all, it's amazing that we that we can race and Super League put such efforts for us to race. First, like with the Arena Games and now with uh, with proper racing, uh, like Jersey is my favorite venue of uh, of all time. But uh, we'll see what uh, what London and, and Munich and Malibu uh, have to offer. But uh, yeah, I guess Malibu can't be that bad from what I remember on TV for um, Baywatch. That, that that looked good, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't your partner Taylor? She used to be like a, effectively a Bay, Baywatch. She used to do some uh, surf life saving in the, in California, did she not? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Just on the just on the the other side in uh, Red on the Beach. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's properly it. I guess she she still has a a red uh, swimsuit in a in a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of of super? Like obviously you're going for the treble this year, I suppose. WTS racing. Uh, we've got the Olympics coming up, and then we've got Super League. So. I mean, for you, what is it makes Super League special? Um, it's 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 a lot different to uh, other forms of racing that you'd been involved in, and you've done everything up to a seventy point three in the last twelve months. Yeah, I just I just like Super League because it's like, um, you know, it's this kind of races you you just enjoy from the start to the finish. But starting by the travel, by the hotel, just the vibes around being with all the athletes. You don't you don't race for your federation. You don't you don't. You don't feel the pressure. I mean, at least for me, I'm just I'm just going to Super League to have fun, and uh, and to see other people, to spend time with people that I that I can't spend time with um, in normal time because we we all stay with our own federation. So I think Super League is good. It also gives the athlete like more autonomy to to pick whatever sponsors they want to put on their suit or whatever decision they want to take during the race. They don't have to hold back because 
uh, like a country mate is at the in the front group or stuff like this. So I think it's just like a lot of freedom from the athlete. And and also what I like is that there is no all these stupid rules and everything. It's it's just about we Super League set some rules, but uh, but if you think you can you can do something better or you can like have have any advantage on your side, just just do it. We've seen that with people swimming with running shoes. We've seen that with uh, people like taking their shoes off even before the transition area. We've seen that with people running without shoes. So that's that's a lot of like the athlete has to think, and I and I like it. Yeah, uh, you've got to think really, because if you don't come up with something, someone else is going to do it instead, and you're going to get left behind. And for you now, I mean, we're on the eve of some some really big races, and it's a really big period of time to be Vincent Lewis. Right? So we go to Yokohama. You say you leave in a week. Uh, obviously, Leeds, Tokyo, uh, and then Super League, but. So, so I just ask you, how do you, how are you feeling, man? I mean, you're feeling the pressure. I'm, I'm, you're a kind of a guy that reminds me of like a of like a Chris McCormack, I suppose, in terms of like soaking up the pressure and letting it fuel you rather than letting it weigh on you. Yeah, uh, thanks for the thanks for the note with with Chris. Huh? I mean, uh, the the only thing uh, the only thing I got uh, that 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 might that might match him is maybe the the tan on the skin because uh, he still has two <laughs> two Hawaii's more than me but yeah that's 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 kind from you but um no yeah that's that just like i just love to race i just like love to tow the the start line i, I don't get me wrong I, I really like training but racing is just i'm just this kind of adrenaline junkie i, I like to go on the start line and and and, and want to do my best and, and win the race and, and beat everyone on the start line it's just i don't know it's just this feeling is is a feeling you you will never get in training or in whatever you you do it's just like Starting something, finishing, and saying, "Yeah, okay, um, I, I've done my job. I've done it properly, and, and now it's mine." So yeah, I, I'm I'm really excited. I was actually talking talking about it with uh, Martin on the on the run we had together yesterday, and I was like, well, "I can't wait to race. I'm, I'm I really I really want to race. I'm excited about racing." And yeah, it's gonna be a really a really good build up until the Olympics, and then we have all the Super League to enjoy, and and having four races in a row, and and all these things. Yeah, I just can't wait. I, you know, putting the the race tires on the bike, having your race shoot ready, and and all this stuff. It's just these little things that you hearing your voice. You know, it's just these little things like you're like, wow, oh, it's just around it. the corner. <laughs> stop it! Oh, no, I can't wait to do it either. It's going to be fantastic. Were, were you ever considering Arena Games? Uh, you know, did you get close to deciding to come? Uh, yeah, I thought about it. I thought about it last year uh, actually. To have like just like a, a dry run before before um, Hamburg uh, was and um, I don't know I was in altitude I was like feeling great I did not really want to add a travel to it and um, so so I did not trace and and this year I was like um, I don't know it's an important year should I travel should I train more it was a bit of a 50 50 but then uh, you know I wasn't sure I could beat Martin actually so I just did not get into the plane. <laughs> he was really strong i like well, he was wasn't yeah, he I, I, yeah yeah no he was really strong in control i mean I, i've raced him on zwift a few times and i was training with him day in day out and and, and i could tell in the pool he was super strong too so i mean that's really not a surprise for me he was scared about a few a few other athletes but Honestly, they had no chance starting next to him, <laughs> like in whatever discipline in the arena games. I was, I was hundred percent sure he was going to win this one. Well, he certainly did. So it's going to be really interesting when we get to um, September. Obviously, everyone in in plenty of form, and the start list is unbelievably strong. So you're going to have a whole ton of of people uh, looking at that target on your back. So you must be looking forward to that because the names are very strong throughout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. You know, there is, there's a few people I've never raced on Super League. Um, I think uh, Alistair is one of them, and, uh, and, and I'm always saying I'm enjoying these, these races. It's uh, every year I have a different guy to, to really, uh, to really race against. Like sometimes it's Henry, sometimes it's Christian. Uh, Hayden is also in the mix. So Pierre Lecour last year in jerseys. Yeah, whoever wants to race me at Super League, I'm, I'm keen to, to take on the bet. What about Yella Gaines? I know you train with him all the time. He's joining us for the first time. Yeah, yeah, Yella is, Yella is really strong. He, he, he had a really good winter, really consistent. Uh, he, I think he improves his swim too, so he, he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be tough to beat. He's good technically, so I think a race like Jersey can be good for him. And he has this like top speed finish also that you need at Super League. 
But uh, yeah, we'll see how he handles the swim after after already one one race. I think that's the most important in Super League. That's where you can see people having the the wheels falling apart a bit. It's when you dive back in the cold water of Jersey and and you already have your legs around your neck. That's that's when it's that's when it's important. Yeah, that's my favorite part because Macca and I are sitting in the commentary box eating s- snacks when that happens. That's <laughs> always very fun for me. Now, like looking back, so, so we get to the end of this year and you're sitting back at Christmas Day eating whatever French triathletes eat for Christmas lunch. I don't know what that is, probably six baguettes and a protein shake. What would you consider to be a good year? Because there's so many t- so tentpole moments, so many big moments this year. I mean, what's a pass mark for you in 2021, considering that you've you won four in a row at the back end of the year? Uh, I guess when you're an athlete, as when you when you win, you want to win again. So um, for sure, like n- not winning races, I'd be disappointed. But uh, in 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 a year like 2021, there is basically only one race you want to win. It's uh, it's the Olympics, to be fair. And uh, and I think everything around will be just just bonus. But you you know, last year I felt pretty strong, and uh, and I had a really consistent good winter. I, I I put a lot of hard work and all the hours in. Did not meet any, did not miss any session or, or whatever. So uh, I know sport is not uh, math, and that's that's maybe why I'm good at. Uh, but um, it's uh, yeah, I just want to win more. So uh, I'm, I'm just gonna show I'm just gonna show up at every race with the with the will to to win, and um, especially the race I like. Uh, I mean Yokohama, I really like it. Uh, Leeds, everyone wants to to win to beat the Bronies, I guess. Um, then the Olympics, everyone wants to. Uh, take the plane back with a medal. Uh, we also have the relay, which is good for us. Uh, then all the super leagues. That's gonna be that's gonna be good fun. I think after the Olympics, people will be with a lot less pressure and and then uh, a lot more initiative. We can see maybe athletes being more like feeling more free to to take decisions and and take risks during race. So that that could be yeah that that could be great. But for sure. When I'm gonna sit down at the end of the year, and and if I look back and I don't have at least a, a medal to look back, uh, I'd be for sure disappointed with this year. Yeah, that's that's the pressure, I suppose, of an Olympic year. It only comes around once every 1,460 days. Not that I need to remind you of that. <laughs> um, so, last question. Obviously, we're talking about the treble for you in some ways. WTS, you're obviously defending your world championship. Uh, Super League is there, and right in the middle of it is the Olympic Games. Um, and Super League's going to be on your journey with you across the course of this, shooting a documentary that's all about Vince. I feel like you've made it in life if someone's like, can we make a documentary about you? I mean, they didn't even make a documentary about Michael Jordan until he was retired. You get to do it while you're still going. Um, how's that going to be, and what can we expect to see uh, in, in the Vincent Lewis documentary this year? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm really lucky to be surrounded by uh, by really creative people, people that have like uh, ideas that are mostly that not of like not all that's good, but mostly good. So it's it you know we we were watching all the videos like popping up the YouTube channels of athletes and everything, and we were wondering, oh, should we do a YouTube channel? And I and I told my agent, oh, I don't have time for that. I'm I'm not a content creator. It's not my job. I'm I'm paid for racing and and not for editing videos or grabbing my GoPros everywhere. So. Mm-hmm. But let's do something nobody already did in triathlon. So we have videos about training. We have videos about people doing espressos in the kitchen. We have videos about all of these things. But let's let's do something like nobody did, and let's have like a really inside, behind the scene, emotional, emotional like centered video. So I'm I just say okay, let's for, like a it's a budget. It's a huge budget to 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 get to get together. So. Super League was really helpful for that, and and then we uh, we picked the good people because you know you don't want to have like a guy that you don't know in your in your kitchen or looking at you with a camera when you wake up and and all this stuff. So um, we we picked a good crew, people that some days I wasn't even aware that, that they were around because they were so so discreet that it was it was really nice for me, really easy, and uh, yeah, we put all these things together. So we already like wrapped out the first episode i think now uh, i'm gonna take i'm gonna take it a bit more easy like leading to the olympics it's not the olympic center it's like really a whole year in the life most more more and um yeah for for the races like super league when we have a bit more freedom we'll go really behind the scene to show everyone how our 
how is it how is it to race around the world and and all these things how it's hard right now to travel for us and 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 all that and also um, we we working on having like live live data for the for the races and all this stuff so yeah i i, I just hope it's gonna be like a first of of many that triathletes can do and and having more inside and and making like triathlon maybe about a bit more like popular and 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 showing people what what we really do and we're not just showing up in a bathing suit every every month to to race for two hours and coming back home and just riding under the rain so yeah it's more about all the process of having the olympic selection announced and and all these things it's it's really about behind the behind the scene because if if you want if you want to know how triathletes train just go on strava or socials and and you love whatever they want to show you but uh, i think the rest is the most important is who who are we really that's it that's exactly right the human story and I'll, i'll talk about it with the rest of the crew in a minute but the human story doesn't matter whether it's triathlon or chess or doesn't matter what it is, as long as the, the human stories are there. And, and um, you know, we, we really appreciate having you allow Super League um, into your life to be able to do that and then promote triathlon in a big way. So thank you so much for that. Good luck uh, in Yokohama and for the rest of the year. And thank you so much for getting up early and taking the time to join us on the Short Shoot Triathlon Show, Vince. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was my pleasure. And uh, if you need any any consultant for the next uh, Arena Games, uh I'd be up too, huh? but uh, I, I might be BS, but uh, yeah, no worries. I can, uh, I can do something. I can help. Oh, well, you, you got to take that that pink back off, Martin. That's that's, that's the first <laughs> thing you need to do. <laughs> I will. He knows. He knows. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thank you. So there you go. Words from the man himself, and I, I suppose there's a little bit of pressure um, on Vincent Lewis because we're all sitting here talking about him as if it's a lay down that he's going to win everything. Because basically he has been winning everything, but now he comes in as world number one, world champion, uh, to an Olympic year where, and by his own admission at Rio, he didn't live up to his expectations. Finished seventh, I think, from memory, seventh, um, and he was expecting, well, in his head, he was expecting a podium. So, you know, I, I guess. For everyone, um, like oh Tim, I'll start with you. Obviously, the uh, uh, the Olympics man. But when you come in and you have to do this on one day, and it's one day out of every fourteen hundred and sixty days that everything has to go perfect for you. I mean, from his position where everyone's looking at him, how how do you mentally cope with that? I mean, how, how hard is that? Because there's so much that can go wrong in a triathlon that can cruel him now for four years before. Paris, which obviously you have one eye on being a home athlete, but how hard is that for him being in the position he's in? Oh, it's tremendous hard. The, the weight, as you said, with Paris three years away, the weight of a nation is going to be on him, you know, and I'm sure he'll be playing that down a little bit. But I think someone of his caliber, with his experience, with his team around him, you know, how they work, they will be planning on him winning even when he's only 85, 90%. He will not need he in his mind he will not need to be a hundred percent to win the medal if you need to have the day the perfect day to win it, it, it never happens in triathlon you know he's making himself bulletproof in the swim in the bike and the run mm. you know he'll keep an eye on alistair if alistair gets selected that's probably going to change the dynamics of the race especially leading up to it but um you know also, I like to think of it when I've been to the games, it's service as normal. It is the Olympic Games, but it's the same swimming, the same biking, the same running, racing against the same athletes in a venue which they've raced at before. And if you start changing things and doing things differently, again, you know, consistency is king. And he will want to be doing the same build up that he does, whether it was for Hamburg in a lockdown year or the grand final in uh, 2019. Um, but there's no doubt about it, he thrives on the pressure. You know, when people say he's favourite, he's like, I am favourite. I am the man to be. And I think that's a that's a great, you know, he backs himself. So, yeah, I, I think he'll manage it well. But because he's using the team around him and the build up for that day has already started for him big time. Yeah, absolutely. And the, and the stories, I guess, and we're going to dig into this with Super League's uh, documentary. I think we're going to find a lot more layers to Vincent Lewis and exactly how how he operates. He's never been a guy who is super comfortable in the in the media, um, doesn't like to talk too much. But being able to, I mean, I guess Super League have really built up a level of trust with with Vincent and and we get a level of access. And I think that'll be really interesting. And, and Maka, I think for you, like, 
looking at him, and I mean, you were world number one for so long, you know, how he copes with the pressure and, and the expectation and how you did is probably a little bit similar in terms of just owning it, owning that that tag and knowing everyone's looking at you and feeding off that and, and, and knowing that when you're in a pack together, everyone's worried about you. And he, he probably seems a bit similar. Look, I, I think the big advantage for Vincent Louis is, is – his his age, you know, we we talk about he's he's in his early thirties. He's not a young athlete. He's he's been to the Olympic Games before. He he got off that with that front group in Rio, and I expected him to pick up a, a medal there. He, he was a dynamic runner, but the the boys, the two Brownlee boys, and most of that field ripped the legs off of everyone on that course, and and a lot of people paid the price on that run. But I think he's going into these Tokyo Olympics a, a lot more centered as an athlete. He's he's there's four years between those two events. He is comfortable. It reminds me a little bit. Mm. The one dis- one thing I was surprised was he did not to go to that test event. I, I didn't see the test event. And it reminded me of Simon Lessing didn't opted not to go to Sydney prior to the Sydney Olympics. And uh, and I think there's a, there's there's some momentum that comes with understanding a course, feeling comfortable with the course, something you can visualise, especially with everything that's happened between between that test event and, and the Games. Yeah, yeah, sure. As you said, Tim, it, it is swimming against the same people, running against the same people. But you know better than anyone having been to four Olympic Games the Olympics is different. It, it comes around every four years, or well, three Olympic Games. Sorry, Why would you correct him? That's ridiculous. Yeah. And, 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 and outside the Brownleys, no favourite has ever won the Olympics. And Alistair is a special beast, right? Alistair is a very special athlete, and they come around once in a lifetime. But no favourite has won that Olympic Games gold medal. And, and so it, there is a little bit of a triathlon curse going into an Olympic Games as the favourite. Gomez didn't do it in, in Beijing and Lessing didn't do it in Sydney and Robbo was one of the favourites for for, um, for for Greece, didn't do it. And, and in fact, they, they got pumped. You know, they were, they were off the podium, all of them. So, you know, there is that concern. I just think, you know, Vincent, he's, he's, he's stayed on track during that COVID. He won that world championship last year in, in, in a sprint event. He stayed focused on the game ahead of him. He's moved to Girona. He's training with his training group. I think the momentum of knowing there's a there's a gold medal there potentially in the relay with such a strong depth across the men and women in that mixed relay, he can relax a little bit, but there's no guarantees. You know, Hayden Wild is, you know, he's a young athlete two years on from that test event, is a lot stronger athlete now. Vasco Velasa, as you said, loves the hot weather. These athletes, if it comes together, are capable of outrunning and 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 beating Vincent Louis if 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 everything goes right, no one picked Simon Whitfield to win the Sydney Olympic Games. He went on to be one of the greatest um, ITU athletes of all time. But get, leading into Sydney and what he did at that Olympics, I still go back and watch that that sprint finish. It was remarkable to execute on a day, to, to put all that talent together. And there's so many athletes with, that have the talent to do it. So whether they can get it right on that day, that'll be that'll be key. Well, we're, we're straying dangerously into um, Olympics discussion here, so I'm not, Annie. I'm not going to ask you about it because it's just it'll, like you know, people are at the end of their long ride or whatever. They don't. Oh, she's off. <laughs> I just they want to wrap it up. Uh, but what I will ask you because obviously you spend a lot of time, um, you know, on pool deck side or in in amongst it in, in Super League and, and and trying to tell those those human stories in the moment. And it's not always that easy, uh, especially when they're mostly out of breath, but to bring something out of people. And with a, with, in a documentary level, and I, and I know that because Macca and I are working on a, docu- on a different documentary for the Sub-7, Sub-8 project, and, and it, what, it, what it means is bringing out the human stories that it doesn't matter whether it's triathlon, um, football, chess, you know, two bugs crawling up a wall. If there's a human story behind it, it you don't need to be a fan of the sport. So taking time to dig into a person regardless of what they are and this is obviously Vincent and he's got a lot you know there's a lot to unpack there it's so important to grow the sport um and that's what we try and do at Super League in a, in a short format in a very very short format but now as well in a in a really long format we've got enough time to go to his house and see his photos and see where he grew up and you know all these things you know how how important is that for growing this sport because there's so much potential well, I mean, that was a, a really uh, long question. And if you want a short answer, I'm not sure if I, I've got it, really. Um, <laughs> Just a medium, a medium answer would be fine. <laughs> well, OK, the, the human stories. Uh, we've lost Tim. Tim's gone. He's already bored. He's already bored of me. All right, all right, all right. 
Come back in. Okay, Come later. back in, boys. Come. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, so. Do go on, Annie. Do okay, go okay. on. Right, I'm going to go on. Okay. Uh, Vincent Louise, like human story there. He had a lot of personal issues. Uh, I think people joke. I say a lot. He had a personal issue going on before uh, Rio that I think made it very hard for him. And I think that could be a wonderful story, him coming in, a much happier man, a stronger athlete. Um, you know, human stories, the Brownleys, you know, um, Jonathan has had a really tough time, you know, uh, you know, but Alistair's your brother. Wow, that's got to be tough, right? And, you know, I just think he, he wants that gold medal, but it's going to be really tough. Um, if we're talking about stories about Canadians, uh, you talked um, about Simon Whitfield, who won as a complete outsider. What about Tyler Mislichuk coming into... Uh, yeah coming into um, Tokyo and doing the same that, you know, his uh, fellow, I say, say teammate, not teammate, but countryman did. Um, so those human stories, we, we, we love them in this sport. Um, and there's a great one for anybody looking in now, um, Martin Van Riel, who won the, uh, of course, the Arena Games uh, in Rotterdam, training with Mark Herrmans. So you'd know Mark Herrmans, wouldn't you, Maka? The amazing Belgium athlete who had, was yeah. a great Ironman athlete and had a horrific bike accident and ended up mm. in a wheelchair. Um, and I didn't realise, actually, that it was Mark that, you know, was one of the early influencers for, for Martin Van Riel. And there's a brilliant um, documentary, mini documentary up on the Super League channel of Martin and chatting with Mark Herrmans, who uh, encouraged him in the early days to get out there and become a triathlete. Wonderful story as well. Is that enough, Will? Have I gone on too much or should I shut up? Or should I carry on? I've got plenty more up my sleeve. Oh, oh are you okay, mate? Should I? <laughs> Would you like this music? Are you sad? <laughs> Is everything all right? <laughs> Well, I think that wraps us up. Should I keep this dramatic piano? No, let's get rid of that. Uh, I think that wraps us up. Thank you so much, Annie. Thank you, for, thank you especially for joining us this week. Thank you also to Macca and to Tim and, of course, to Vincent Lewis, uh, Jess Learmonth as well. Pretty fair lineup this week. Wow. Uh, who do you want to see on the podcast if you're still here with us? Uh, congratulations. Let us know via – we don't have a hashtag, so let us know via Macca's Instagram. Uh, he'd love that. He's nearly at 100,000 followers. Send him a private message on it's it. It's a place once a month. Hey? <laughs> He's at 92.2,000. 92,000. He's so close. Help, go to his Instagram. Follow him. And don't make him buy fake followers just to get to that 100 grand. That's a very important thing that we have to keep in mind. I think about it every day. Um, and I, I don't know. I haven't got any followers, so don't worry about it. But thank you to everybody. Um, we'll be back with another episode. Enjoy in the meantime. Uh, WTS Yokohama. Hopefully we'll be back after that to chat about that. But make sure you head to superleaguetriathlon.com to find out all the details about the championship series announced today. It's going to be huge. More details to come. Uh, and that wraps us up for now. Thanks. Bye. Super League Triathlon is back and bigger than ever, starting September 2021. The fastest, most exciting, most brutal triathlon on the planet in global iconic locations. London. Can Johnny Brownlee get the better of Vincent Lewis on the cobblestones of West India Quay? Munich. At the iconic Olympic Park, can Jonas Schomburg, the breakaway king, shine on home soil? Jersey. Will it be first time glory for Jess Learman as she goes head to head with Olympic teammate, Georgia Taylor Brown? Malibu. Can Katie Zafiris reign supreme at Super League's debut stateside championship final? I am Super League.